Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, our main goal is to get our circuit board set up as uh, this next part of our automated, uh, so, sorry, our director assembly. Assembly director. Oh, man, what the hell are those things called again? Director, assembly director systems. Yeah, I can never remember what those are called. Um, as you can see, we almost have a thousand of them made for the space elevator just by using our storage, but... I am starting to run out of stuff, so I can't, you know, I can't sustain that forever. Um, and yeah, I've got a lot of a lot of changes to show you. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go into fly mode to show those changes really quick before we get started in earnest. So let's see. I guess the first thing is that we do have a. Uh, I did set a, a hypertube route up to the nitrogen fracking uh, mining area. And so this is it. And I also, uh, you know, if you look off in the distance there, you can see that I've run a pipeline down to the factory and put a couple of tanks down there. Uh, so we have nitrogen to use down there because I've got a bunch of stuff set up over there for making turbo motors. And all of that stuff that you see over there is only part of what turbo motors require. Some of the stuff I'm I'm shipping in from, you know, just from my storage and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so I did that, and you know, I'll tell you one thing that I'm I'm learning uh, because here again, this is my my first time getting this far in this game. Is that most stuff that you you know that you can make you're going to need in pretty decent quantities later on. And so I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to, when we start over with 1.0, I'm going to probably automate almost everything uh, because I haven't done that this time. I've, I've just, you know, made it kind of a a as I needed it, so to speak, for certain things or put up temporary, you know, setups and stuff and, you know, the further you get into this game, the, the less and less viable that becomes. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll just do the best we can for the rest of this playthrough. But when 1.0 comes out and we start over, um, it will be my plan to uh, to do that. You know, we'll probably automate just about everything. Uh, there's still a couple things we may not need to. But, you know, for example, I have not automated crystal oscillators. And I haven't automated AI limiters. And I haven't automated... Um, I'm talking about permanently automated um, high-speed connectors, stuff like that. And, you know, n n now I need that stuff, you know, to, to make this even higher level stuff, and I don't have a, a permanent supply of those things. So, any hoozle, um, I, I don't know if I had put these lights in here before I left you guys in the last episode. So, yeah, we got lights there that you can see. And the only other thing I did different here is I... I changed all the gas pipes to, to kind of a gray, light gray color. So I'm using black for oil, blue for water, yellow for fuel, red for turbo fuel, and white for, um, for gas. All right, so just wanted to show you that. Let's go ahead and just fly back down to the base here. All right, so yeah, I've got these two uh, fluid buffers here that are completely full uh, with nitrogen. Um, and then this setup is, um, ultimately this, this whole setup here is to make turbo motors, which I currently have 141 of, and we're going to pull six of these out of here actually, because we need to take them with us over to our, uh, silica deposits. Uh, I'm sorry, not silica, quartz deposits, because... I am uh, I, I'm no longer able to supply enough quartz to this factory and we're going to need even more of it for the circuit boards because I have the silica circuit board recipe which is a really good recipe for you know for making circuit boards so anyway uh, here we have a blender that is making cooling systems and it requires heat sinks so we're making the heat sinks here in the heat exchanger except for I currently have that paused uh, because I'm starved at the moment on aluminum casings, as you can see. But I have a bunch of heat sinks. Well, I wouldn't say a bunch, but I have, um, you know, several stacks of those that have been made. Um, and so, 
this whole system is currently on pause. All right, and so that's making that, and then um, let's see, this machine here is making crystal oscillators, and those are backing up because, again, I'm running out of resources. This machine's making radio control units, and all of that uh, is feeding then into here to make turbo motors. So we have, need cooling systems, radio control units, motors, and rubber. And of course, we're just shipping the motors and the rubber directly in from, uh, you know, from our storage. I've got a bunch of spaghetti going on over here, um, you know, to do this because it's all temporary. But uh, yeah, my my store <laughs> my storage is a mess right now. It's just an absolute disaster. <laughs> I can't even hardly get in there uh, with all the shit that's going on. Um, I have this guy um, making extra heavy modular frames, except for that we're, you know, we, we've pretty much exhausted our screw supply. But, you know, I've been using them so much that it just takes such a long time for that building to make them. But uh, let's see where we are with those um, heavy frames. Yeah, see, it, they, they're just being used like crazy. Um, in fact, I even, I even cut them off for a little while and it looks like they've used them all up. So, okay. So yeah, these guys are, this is completely full of heavy modular frames and my drones are pretty much in a holding pattern now too, because I'm completely out of aluminum casings. That's, that's the thing right now that, um, I'm in the worst shape on is the aluminum casings. Uh, and, you know, we only have the, the one semi-permanent aluminum production over there that's making both casings and sheets, and it's not even close to enough, you know. So that that's, here again, what I'm saying is that that stuff really needs to be fully automated. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to fully automate those in this playthrough because, again, our time is limited. We have less than a month now before... The full release comes out so i think i'm just going to keep doing the best that i can to get by with that and we'll just keep working on you know building our our large factory for the directory assemblies and then we'll just kind of see how far we get before before we have to wrap this one up but you know it's just something that i'm learning and will do better you know in my season two playthrough uh, of satisfactory okay so anyway uh i think that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in terms of what's currently going on. Um, do we have another hard drive? I can't even remember. Let's see. We do. Okay, so we have alternate recycled rubber. So I don't know. Uh, okay, that does 60 per minute. What do we currently have? We've got two that do 20 per minute. Uh, so this is this is the one that uses the resin. And then this is the default recipe here. I mean, 60 per minute is pretty damn good, actually. It's three times as much. But we'd have to we'd have to generate fuel to do that. What is this? Yeah, I think we've looked at this one and not super impressed. This one's not terrible just by virtue of the fact that it uses iron instead of copper to make wire which is more plentiful, but I already have some pretty good wire recipes. And I've got some pretty, what is that? Compacted coal, yeah. I've already got some pretty decent steel recipes too. Um, just, I, I'm just trying to think of why I would gener I would create fuel to make rubber when rubber is really almost a by, well, you use the byproduct of fuel to create the rubber. The thing that is attractive about this is it's a lot. 60 per minute is really good. So uh, I think we're going to take this one. Let's do it. All right, that's it. And I don't have any more hard drives left. So we're, we're going to have to go out and get some more. Uh, and we need, we still need to go explore the, the dune desert, too. We haven't been out there on this playthrough. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I need to do a little bit of inventory management and then... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to travel out to our quartz miners and we're going to upgrade those miners to Mark III, uh, which is why I needed these turbo motors. And then all, along the way back, we're going to upgrade 
the belt that's bringing the quartz in to a Mark V. We're just going to go all the way, max it out. Uh, I don't need that much right at this moment, but I need more than I have, so I figured if we're going to go to the trouble to do it, we might as well just max it out as high as we can get it. Uh, which means, you know, everything in Satisfactory right now is limited by the speed of the Mark V belt. Unless, of course, you ran two belts, which, which you could do. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the goal there. All right, so I will bring you guys back when we're ready to go out and do that. All right, guys, let's head on out to the Northern Forest. Okay, here we are. So, um, we have, if we take a look at Mark V, we have 780 resources per minute. Divide that by two, and 390 is our number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a Mark III miner and upgrade both of these. And then we want to set this to 390. And this one we set up, but we never actually started it. So we're going to start it now. And this, again, this is going to give us, for the time being anyways, way more quartz than we need. But that may, that may change. So let's grab um, that line there and we'll stick it right in the corner and run that over to there. Okay, so these belts need to be upgraded then to Mark V. And we're going to have to join that belt to the other one. Okay, so I think what we'll do here is let's put a... Yeah, let's put a thing there. That's probably where it needs to go. And then we want to put a merger here. Actually, here. Oh. Right. No. Let's do let's do the merger first. Um, is it going to line up with this? With a snap? Uh. -uh. Okay. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to eyeball it then. Right about there is probably where we want that to be. Now let's get a Mark V lift. Oh wait, this this actually can be Mark Four. Can it be Mark Four? Yeah, I think so. Mark Four is four eighty, right? So this doesn't need to be Mark V at all. Um, don't have a lot of encased industrial beans, but probably enough to to do this. Uh, so let's change this to four. Wait a second, what? There. For some reason it wasn't letting me... Uh, do the change up. That's weird. Okay, that can be Mark IV and this can be Mark IV. But on the other side of this, then we need Mark V. Okay, so let's grab a Mark IV lift. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, oh, I think I need to reverse this. There we go. 
and probably right there is correct. I guess we don't really need this at all, do we? Um, I we're up just a little too high. Okay, that's where it was, so let's bring it down one notch there. So, these guys are going to produce 390 per minute uh, for a total of 780, which is the Mark V belt capacity. And that, uh, I mean, that might be enough quartz for us to finish out the rest of this playthrough. We'll see. Okay, so now I'm just going to go along and start working my way back and upgrading all of this to Mark V. And I think I will cut the camera here because that's pretty much it. It's going to be kind of tedious and I'll meet you guys back on the other end. Alright guys, I got uh, the line upgraded to Mark V all the way to this point and the quartz, uh, you know, so we, we basically have 780 quartz coming down this line. And then I got a, a Mark III lift here uh, coming down and then feeding two less than 60 per minute belts over here, you know, to make our quartz crystal and our uh, silica. And I overclocked, I actually ended up overclocking the silica machine um, as, as high up as I could get it just because I, I, I really need a lot of silica over there to make all that aluminum stuff. But even with that, we're still pulling less than 60 per minute. And then this one is pulling 37 and a half per minute. So that lift over there could be a Mark II, but we'll just leave it as a Mark III because we'll probably, uh, you know, be increasing that later. Everything from this point forward then is on a Mark II. Um, so we can supply um, 120 per minute. And then when we get over here, the quartz breaks off and goes up to the computer factory where we're using about, I think it's like 49.5, so about 50 per minute. And then it also breaks off here and goes around to our new factory where we're going to be using it to make circuit boards uh, because we're making the silica circuit boards. And that total amount is also, I believe, less than 60 per minute. But if, if it turns out it's not to, then all I have to really do is just upgrade those belts. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up circuit boards over here, but we're going to cut, we're going to kill two bullet birds with one stone. We're going to set up the circuit boards for directly feeding into the manufacturers for the assembly director systems because that's one of the the four ingredients. But um, we're also going to use the crystal computer recipe for our computer part of this build uh, because we only <clears throat> we only need assemblers and more circuit boards and crystal oscillators. Now the crystal oscillators themselves will require three inputs in a manufacturer, but we can use, uh, if we just use the default recipe for that, which I'm planning on using, um, the, the ingredients will be, you know, pretty basic stuff. So overall, I think that'll work. So the circuit boards that we're going to set up right now are going to, again, they're, they're going to both feed the assembly directors directly, but they're also going to provide enough circuit boards as the first ingredient of our crystal computer line, which we'll probably build next. So I've set up the blueprints for this, tested it, everything worked well, and as usual, then what we're gonna do now, of course, is build it on camera. So first thing as we've done before is let's just kind of get some temporary power lines down here. So we have uh, hovering ability until we hook up the actual power. And all right, so I need to, we're going to remove, no, actually, we're not going to remove that row yet. I will remove it eventually. Um, so I want to remove this section of foundations here because that's where we're going to put these two blueprints. We're going to also need to put the first section down with walls because um, it doesn't it doesn't line up properly uh, with that blueprint. The reason being is because the edge of this blueprint is here uh, and it goes, well, 
Actually, that might work. Let's just see what it does. I, I don't think it will, but let me try it. If it does, we'll just put some walls down. Uh, okay, so I have, I have these two blueprints here. We want the... All right, we're going to actually put the second one down first. And if we put it in blueprint mode... Yeah, see, it doesn't... It doesn't uh, quite want to behave. So when I was testing that earlier, it wasn't working right. So I, it, it will just start the first one with some walls here. Okay, let's go back here. We'll get this one. And we, want, we do not want to be in blueprint mode for setting it down. And then we just need to make sure that it's on the right level, which I th think is that level. And then we just bring it over to here. Okay, that looks good. All right, now let's, um, let's hook up uh, power to that. And then, and and now, you know, because these are powered, we won't need the, the thingies behind there. And likewise, uh, um, how? What the hell is going on here? How can that be connected? I mean, it's not connected because the lights aren't on, but what the hell? I wonder if I, did I leave an insulator in place when I took everything down after testing it? I don't know. Let's see what happens if we reconnect it now. Yeah, that must have been what it was. I must have, there must be an extra insulator. There's not an extra insulator there. Ah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that explains it, man. I was, like, losing my mind. I'm going, how the hell is that possible? Yeah, I, I had an extra insulator there um, that I forgot to, you know, take apart. So it just, when I put the blueprint down, it just covered it over and doubled it up is what happened there. Okay. That solved that mystery. I was, like, going, what in the hell, man? Okay, so we'll plug that in to there. And this can go back over here. And... Why isn't that lighting up? Oh, because I took... Okay. Oh, geez. It's been a long day, man. All right. Let's reconnect these. There we go. Okay. Now we're now we're in business. But in order to fix this, I'm going to have to remove that. I'm going to have to do this. And then I'm going to have to do this. Take that back apart. Grab this. Put it back in place right here. Reconnect. And then just paint that gray. Okay, we're back in business. Alright, let's get the let's get the other blueprint in place first and then we'll hook it up and I'll con it and I'll explain what's going on here. Uh, so Let's just temporarily run that to there so I can get use this one. We'll go back to our blueprints. We're going to grab the Copper Sheet Refineries blueprint, which does not have the refineries themselves on it because um, you, can't, you can't fit the refineries on the blueprint designer with a foundation underneath because it won't fit. It's, uh, it's too high. All right, so let's lock that in place, or, or, yeah, lock it and then move it over. Okay. Very good. And we get a, a game safe. All right, we'll run that down to there to get those powered up and help us hover. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take now and grab two, or excuse me, three refineries. Uh, which we're just going to directly build. And I want... Let's see. Let's put that there. I think we need to nudge it that way. One, one bump. Yeah. That looks right. 
Okay, and then we'll do the same thing here. And here. Okay. We're going to set these refineries to steamed copper sheet. And hook up their power. Very good. All right, so what we have going on here is we have two constructors each uh, uh, generating 33.75 silica per minute. And uh, 33.75 times two is 67.50, okay? Um, I have 22 silica coming in here, 22 coming in here, that's 44. These two are going to create, uh, generate, uh, or yeah, build, manufacture, whatever. God, my brain's not working tonight. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, 20 circuit boards in total because we need 10 circuit boards for this adaptive control unit and 10 circuit boards here. Okay. So we have 44 silica coming in. Now this one is going to um, manufacture or build 10.666 uh, circuit boards. And this one is going to feed these two, each requiring 5.333. Right there. Um, because I've got these underclocked to do two per minute. Um, because that's what the assembly directors require okay so it's taking in 23.465 so if we add that to 44 it basically comes to 67.465 and I just have that rounded off to 67.5 I'm not gonna worry about that you know half half of a thousandth of a point or whatever the hell it is okay so that's what that is um and then uh, they're also, they also need 22 copper sheet per minute, 22 per minute, 22 uh, or 23.465 per minute. Um, so if we do, okay, hold on a sec. Um, uh, well, it's the same, it's the same number. Yeah, 67.5 because it's, it's the same number uh, as the, as the silica, right? So again, that comes to 67, well, technically 67.465, right? So we have three uh, refineries making 22.5 copper sheeting. If we take 22.5 and multiply that by three, we come out to 67.5. There you go. Uh, all right, so those are the numbers. Um, these three refineries are being fed 22.5 copper per minute which is 22, 44, 66, 67.5. And this is generating 67.5 copper ingots. So I'm using the copper alloy ingot recipe, which takes in copper ore and iron ore to, by default, uh, generate 100 copper ingots per minute, which is a really fantastic recipe because the default only does 30 per minute. So that's why I chose that one. Okay, so that's the math on how everything comes together. Now we just got to get everything hooked up. So let's start by, uh, we'll just remove all of these here. And I've already run the three lines, the quartz, copper, and iron lines here. So let's do the quartz first. I'm actually going to put that back. And we'll run this to here. And we just need to put a splitter here. And we need to reset this lift. And that should start feeding quartz into here and into here. Yep, there it goes right there. Okay, that was easy enough. Next, let's uh, hook up and uh, hook up our copper. 
So we'll bring that down to there. Um, let's see, we're gonna, oh no, let's do the iron next. So the iron will go in here and the copper will go in the lower one. Okay, and we will bring that to, let's see, you are right on the seam there. Go back to. Did I? Is that straight? Yeah. Uh, uh, is it? I think it is. Yeah, I think that's straight. Okay, good. And then for this line, the copper, we will bring that to here. Go back to but we need to drop this one down too. Oh. No, no, no. I didn't need to go back to again. Take that, that, and that. There we go. Okay. And that will get uh, our copper and our iron going here in our foundry for making the ingots. Okay, now to get the uh, ingots out into the refinery, uh, this was already built into the blueprint, so I just need to reset this lift, and it needs to be a Mark II lift. Because we're sending out slightly more than 60 per minute. Uh, so let's grab a Mark II and reset that. And that should be all we need to do to get the copper into the refineries. So there it goes. Okay, so it got its first little batch of copper there. Well, let's actually help it along and throw a little more in there. Okay, now let's hook up the uh, water uh, connections. Oh, actually, yeah, I got to do the lifts on here too, don't I? Um, I think what I'll do... Well, we should be able to just do it this way, I guess. getting copper that should be getting copper momentarily oh that's no good hmm. was that in my blueprint there. Maybe it was. There we go. Okay, good. So that'll actually give these uh, a chance to fill up a little bit before we get the water connected. And let's do that next. All of these refineries are... Taking in a total of uh, 66, 67 and a half water is what they will take in. Okay, let's move this over to here. And we want to grab a pipe and we want to make sure we're on horizontal to vertical. And I already have a marker down here on where we're going to put this. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we got to go one, two back. And into there. We'll grab ourselves a water extractor. And we're going to have to eyeball it because for whatever reason, control doesn't seem to work with this. Okay. 
and we need to set this to 75 per minute. Uh, wait a minute, no, 66, 67.5 per minute. Right, that's kind of our magic number with this build. That should be the exact amount of water that it needs. Uh, we are going to need to also put a pump on this because this is higher than 10 meters, which is the head lift, maximum head lift of the pump itself. So let's grab ourselves a Mark 1 pump. And I want to make sure... Oh, okay, put there and then set the power connector right there. Now, if we come over here for a second and hook that to... Oh, I guess I already did that. Never mind. Okay. I did that in the blueprint. That's right. So this should be powered, and it is because it's sparking. Uh, oh, you know what? I must have had that... I must have had that over further when I tested this, but that's okay. We'll just put a thingy there. Really isn't that big of a deal, actually, but... And then we should be able to just run a power line. Okay, hold on. Power line. There we go. Down to here. See, that one's off, too, so... You know, you try and get these damn blueprints perfect, and they still mess up a little bit. Okay, so I want this to go there, I think. I mean, it almost doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm probably being a little pickier than I need to be. But, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just hook it right from here. Call it good. Not be so damn picky about it. Okay. So that should get all of our inputs taken care of. Now let's do our outputs. You guys are now in the process of making copper sheeting, which is great. We should already have our logistics hooked up for silica uh oh okay why are you guys not loading these dudes with silica <sighs> okay let's go take a look i was expecting that to already be working but it's not so i gotta see back you know what i want to take all this whole row out for the moment let's also remove these walls here. Oh, right. I got to hook this line in. I forgot. Right. Okay. So this needs to be a mark too, because again, we have little, we have 67.5 coming in. So we just need to do this. There, that's all we need to do. We're good to go. I couldn't put that on the edge of the blueprint because it was, you know, beyond the, the maximum border there. Okay. So that takes care of the silica. And then for hooking up the copper sheeting, we just need to run, again, a Mark II line from hither to yon, and that should be it. As long as all the lifts and everything work, we should be golden. Um, and, all oh, right, we got to hook these up, too. I only have the half conveyor belts in there because, again, I couldn't put the actual refineries in the blueprint itself. Okay, we got copper sheeting coming down on all of those. And let's make sure it's coming uh, through everything and then we'll check and make sure each one of the assemblers is getting copper sheeting. And as usual, you know, this is all manifold so it'll take a little while for the whole thing to, uh, you know, normalize and so. Okay, that's a good sign there. Let's check the actual machines. Okay, you're getting copper sheeting, you're getting copper sheeting, and you're getting copper sheeting. Look at that. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, cool. 
So for now, um, a as we've done before, um, I'm just going to put a sink up. So I don't need extra circuit boards. I got tons of circuit boards already anyway, you know, over in our main storage. Uh, so I'm just going to sink all these until, you know, we're ready to actually start hooking stuff up. Okay, there we go. All right, our work here is done. We now have circuit boards for both our assembly director systems and for our crystal computer line, which I think will be the next thing we will build. And then after that, we'll have our heavy modular frames, which will be the last thing. And then we can fully automate assembly director systems. So that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I'm going to jump right into the computer build. Um, and the plan will be for in the next episode to get going on that. And then we're probably going to just jump right into the heavy modular frames because I'd like to get this whole entire assembly director system built out and and starting to produce the parts. And then after that, we'll probably take a little bit of a break from the factory building and go explore the dune desert and try and get some more hard drives in the next couple of episodes after that before we proceed from there. I also want to try nuclear power out just to try it. Oh, that reminds me too. We can actually learn that milestone right now. Why don't we do that as the last part of this episode? Um, I don't know that I'll do anything real elaborate with it just because, you know, we're to completely running out of time here for this series before 1.0 comes out, but I'd like to at least set up maybe a small nuclear plant just to kind of see how it works and, you know, uh, check that box off, so to speak. Um, so let's go, let's go do the milestone real quick here. Okay, so we're gonna need supercomputers, heavy modular frames. Uh, I got, well, I got some of those. Cable, uh, and what are these? Oh, just concrete, that's it? Okay. All right, so heavy modulars, cable, concrete, and 50 supercomputers. I have those right here. Nuclear power. Here we go. I just pressed the button. Milestone reached. Uranium scanning unlocked. With the provided buildings and parts, you can now set up nuclear power generation, which balances an increase of fuel production complexity with improved power output. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. All right, cool. Note, this method of power generation creates nuclear waste. Right, so just like oil, uh, we'll have waste to deal with. And again, I want I want to just kind of experience that, so I have a clue about it uh, when we start over. Um, and so that I guess those are the items that we need to make a nuclear power plant. And one power plant creates twenty five hundred megawatts. Wow, of power! Holy shit, man! Because the fuel generator just does one fifty. Damn, son, that's crazy. So just four of these creates the same amount of power that all of those fuel generators, that whole entire field of fuel generators, all of this that you see out here, four nuclear power plants creates the same amount of power. That's crazy. But I know it's more complicated than that, though, <laughs> for sure. Uh, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.